Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2022. We continue with Tudor Pro Cycling for the second episode of Season 3. Last time we rode our first races as a pro team and Kasper Andersen delivered straight up at his first race, the Kid Elevens Great Ocean Road Race. Today we continue our racing in France with the Tour des Alpes Maritime du Var, which coincidentally is our third sponsor objective. We need a top 5 in GC. The race starts off with a punchy finish. Honestly, quite similar on day 2, but longer climbs. And we finish on a longer climb, the Mont Ferrand on day 3. We've got a fairly similar team at the start line of this race as our previous one, Alex Bonin going to be our GC leader. But once again, we're up against the big guns, David Godu, Joao Almeida, Nairo Quintana, and so forth. With around 20 kilometers to go, the peloton is slimming down rider by rider. I think we'll have like 20 riders left by the top of this major climb. Well, the most major one in the race today. Page and Baudin looking great to survive this climb. At the finish, I'm going for Baudin though, because we need GC bonus seconds. Moving towards the final 10 kilometers, one rider ahead right now with Baudin and his train trying to control all the attacks behind. We're looking good for this finish, but we've got great competition in the likes of Binyam right here. Four kilometers to go, the gap is now 25 seconds still. I will take over with Nilsbro as we speak right now. Don't say out of the way, my friend. Nilsbro, Page and Baudin ready for the final lead out. We are catching Murdis as we speak. Two kilometers to go. Onto the hill right now. Paj will take over as late as possible once Nils Brun's done for. So let's launch right now with Paj. Oh la la, we've got a tiny gap on the rest of the group. Goldus kind of behind. Bodan the perfect wheel. Bodan the perfect wheel. Bodan the perfect wheel right now. There goes Bodan Paj. There goes Bodan Paj. Bodan can launch right now. We've got a gap on the others and it will be Bodan taking the victory here. Will we get a 1 2? I think we will. Molar will get fat, but. Goldan, no, Bodin. I just ruined the name of my own rider. Oh my god. Anyway, Alex Bonin takes the win. Fairly certain Damien Godin rides for Total Energy at this point. But anyway, Alex Bonin, 12 seconds ahead of Page, Malar and Fad. What a race by us. Directly putting us in the lead, which is great for our top five goal in this race. Stage 2 also quite hilly but longer climb, so let's see if we can repeat that. Roughly 27 kilometers to go and we're about to start the final big climb of the day. So what has our man for this, Brun d'Orsay and Page as support. Let's see if he can survive this climb in one piece. I'm actually having loads of trouble just following the tempo in the group, so I hope that Baudin somehow can keep himself in this group because right now it's not looking that good. My man is out of yellow and just has red right now with 5 kilometers to go, so it's not looking good. Good. I gotta find a way to get in the wheel of the likes of Godou who's now attacking so I can't follow that. I simply cannot follow that. So it's all about surviving right now in the final descent towards the line. Two kilometers to go in the wheel of Binyam. Just gonna follow his wheel. Just going to follow his wheel. Just going to follow his wheel. Hold on as long as possible. We're done for. Don't drop from the group. Do not drop from the group. No, no, no. We gotta keep our top five, Baudin. Come on. Stay in the group, Baudin. Stay in the group. You can do it. Come on. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no, no, I just finished on a gap or what? Oh, no, that's bad. And we're still in the lead. How is that possible? Ahead of Binyam, 12 seconds. I did not see that coming. Then again, I won't complain because that makes sure that we are still in the lead of GC by 12 seconds on Binyam. So that's a win on my end. On to the final stage then. With one goal, we gotta protect our GC on the final climb, Mont Ferrand. Let's do this. Damn it, a minus three on Baudin. <laughs> How am I supposed to do it with that? Col du Corps de Garde. We are on the second last climb, or at least a part of the second last climb of the stage. But that in the peloton protected quite nicely. So let us try and survive even with this minus three. We survived the climb. We're now diving down this mad descent. And some people are crashing. Some people are surviving. We're trying to hold on to the back of the group. Here we go. The climb has basically begun four kilometers uphill. People are basically punching away already. But I can't follow that tempo, guys. I'll do my own tempo and try and make sure that I keep energy for a final punch to the line. Let's do 86 or something, for example. We've got the real guns up there. Go do right here. We gotta find a way to move up somehow. Through this sea of people, 2.5k to go. Come on, man, survive, Baudin. 1.4 kilometers to go. The gap is significant to the front. We are losing our top five right now. 
but I can't do much more than what I'm doing. Like, there's not much more I can do. We're literally losing this race right now, which is really unfortunate. Last kilometer, we're gonna try and launch ourselves a bit later. We're not gonna be able to launch ourselves. We'll just cruise to the line. Go is the winner of the stage. Is gonna take GC most likely. We are very far away. We're likely going to lose our top five. This was a very sad day, and in all honesty, I blame the minus three. David Gudu is the final winner of Tour de Alpes Maritime de Var. We are nowhere in the top ten. The difference of level in this race between Gaudu and Baudin, this stage alone, was just insurmountable for us. Damn, we dropped all the way down to 13th. That is a terrible result in hindsight. And obviously our sponsor is not very happy with that. We got a top 25 instead of a top 5, and that is a red cross for our sponsor objective. When it comes to our scouting, it's pretty straightforward. I decided to sort by each and every rider that is eligible to be signed this year after scouting them this year is a rider I'm observing at the moment then. If I see something intriguing, I'll tell you about it. After our most recent stage races, we're gonna do one-day races. Von Ardèche Classic, Von Drome Classic, we've got Lissam as a Cobble Classic and Trofeo Laiweglia after that. It is time for the Fon Ardèche Classic. We won this race twice in a row last year with Sean Flynn, the year before with Alex Borin. Today, Alex Borin tries again against Krupama FDG with Godu and Madouas. Roughly 24 kilometers to go, we're about to start the bigger of the two climbs that are left, the Coteau du Cornat. Pretty sure it's 6.3 kilometers at 5.5%. Positioning is kind of key because it's kind of narrow, so I'm going to try and move up a tiny bit, but... That kind of failed. Anyway, let's see if we can survive this one. We've got the first attacks. Quintana, Godu, Stanner tried to follow but can't. And then the group we are in right here. So they're not exactly getting a gap. We can't go with them. So I'm just trying to follow the group at the moment. Sean Quinn is kindly closing it down for us. Godu and Quintana about to be caught. We're kind of losing ground, but we are able to come back. So perfect. We are at the front of the race with 17k to go. And the climb is stopping fairly soon. Looks like we've got another move. Zana going, Quintana following Latour and Maduas trying to follow. I'm just gonna try and sit here and hopefully survive. Pelo, come on, hold on, hold on. Pelo might be able to stay in the group, which would be a great help for the next hill. There we go, we've bottomed and another move. Zana goes, Maduas following, Sean Quinn go do Latour. Pelo is here to help me out, but he won't last too long. He's probably gone before the next hill starts. The Côte du Val d'Enfer. Let's try and follow this move. We've got Eric Fetter for Ajazer still moving up. Hold on for now, Baudin. There goes Godu. Baudin the wheel. And we've got minimum energy. Come on, come on, come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get to the wheel of Godu. Quintana going. Can we follow what that is? No, we can't. Just sit up, sit in the wheel of Godu again. There we go. Energy shell, last six kilometers, small uphill once again. And we are still in the wheel. Quintana about to be caught. 10 seconds he has. The others will have to catch him because I won't make the first move here. Two kilometers to go. Godu is closing it down. Madu was in the group as well. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Gotta hold on, gotta hold on last kilometer incoming let's launch in this corner let's launch in this corner Bodin goes Bodin goes Eric Fetter Bodin 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 come on come on come on ah Quintana takes it damn it we're second so close we just didn't catch Quintana on the line we were very close on this one but it was a fun race that's the most important part next to that it also wasn't a sponsor objective so not the end of the world the next race is we need a top 10 in the Fond Drome Classic we also won this race last season with Sean Flynn, but this time it's a pure sprint stage. And it looks like we've got a chance because we are third favorite with Kasper Andersen. 78 sprint should do well here. Let's try and win this race. Six kilometers to go. We've got a group of 38 left after I destroyed the peloton on that last hill. And I'm going to try and go for a victory of Kasper Andersen here. Kellerman's about to be done. Pash has limited energy, so my lead out with him hopefully is decent. Let's do 95 with Wang, not 99. We can't actually sustain that, I think. Let's keep this up for now. 34 people left. We've got some sprinters in our wheel, the likes of Barbie and so forth, Herben Tyson. We are ready with Paj. That's too early. That is too early. I'm going to have to go 95 without sprinting at the moment with Paj. And let's sprint right now with Paj. I got to go early with Anderson because I think there's a corner in the last stretch. So let's go right now with Anderson. There we go. Into this corner. Levasseur. Anderson, Levasseur. Come on. Ah, Levasseur will take it. We should have gone even earlier. Looks like we're going to get a top three. So at least our sponsor will be happy. Not a terrible result, but I wanted to win this one. Then again, I blame the fact that there was a corner in the last stretch. Anyway, they wanted a top 10. We gave them a top 3, so the sponsor's happy with it. Bit of a different type of race now. Le Samain, a cobble sprint type race, which coincidentally really works out for Kasper Andersen, so I won't complain. 
Let's show this Slovakian kid, Peter Sagan, how it's done. Oh my god, Hecht fell, Vogel fell, Fredheim fell. At least it's not Kasper Andersen, but this is like, with 60k to go, four of my riders have fallen, because Vogel has fallen twice before as well, so not a great start to this race. Hecht falls again! Like, what's happening? All my riders are falling like flies, come on guys. And now Hecht is punctured, like... What's happening in this race? Everybody's having crashes and punctures of my team. We've got moves happening in the peloton attacks by Connor Swift, Legak, Sagan, and so forth, but I'm just gonna try and benefit from others closing down gaps for me and hoping that that leads to me actually winning this race. 11 kilometers to go in the peloton. We have only Anderson with energy, attacked by Pajur Norsgaard. I'm gonna keep myself with Sagan. I'm actually literally gonna sit on his wheel with Anderson. That's my goal here. 5.5 kilometers. We've got some riders still up front. Norsgaard, Pajur, and Budding. Come on, Sagan. Do something, my friend. Do something, Sagan. <sighs> Sticking myself to your wheel. Oh, my destiny is in your hands, Peter. He's actually not doing much right now. 20 seconds is the gap. Cobble section right here. These guys might have it. Two kilometers to go. They've still got a gap, but it's being closed down by Adrian Petit. 1.9 kilometers to go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. One kilometer almost. The Vrind goes. Come on, Sagan. Do something, Sagan. Do something, Sagan. We go right now. We go right now. Come on, Anderson. Close down the Vrind. Close down the Vrind. The Vrind is gonna win. The Vrind is gonna win. We launched too late. Oh, we're gonna get second <laughs> again. Why do we always get podiums today? Like... I won the victory! Peter Sagan only landing on a 12th spot. I trusted him a bit too much on this race, I feel like, because if I went a bit earlier after the Vrind, we might have had it. Trofeo Laiweglia, race we won last year as well with Sean Flynn. He was really on fire last year in this period of the year. And he's at the start line this year as well with a fitness peak, so he should be good despite the competition being quite good. About 12 kilometers left to ride. The last hill is upcoming and our group is actually looking really good. We've got five riders with energy. Looks like we've got moves by Repa, Zana and so forth, but we should be able to close that down fairly simple. There we go. Finn Sondregger also ready. Flynn in the wheel of that. Let's get him over this climb to get it with the best. Zambanini going. We gotta try and close that down. Actually, Pelot can actually last towards the top. There we go. And we've got four riders over the top. Well, then the last man for Flynn will launch right now. Flynn in the wheel. We're gonna settle him into a sprint position. Almost, almost, almost right now. We've got Novikov on the left. Baudin versus Flynn for the victory. Easy win for us. Tudor Pro Cycling wins once again in Lyweglia. Two consecutive years in a row, Sean Flynn. After our podiums, this one does feel good. But then again, we were supposed to win this one. Let's be honest. Wait a second. Van Eetveld at 77 Hill. I'm fairly certain he was not that last time I checked. I'm still sad that his acceleration is dog shit though. After finishing off our four one-day races right here, there's one thing left to do in today's episode. The time has come. Our first stage race in World Tour. It's Parinis time, baby. We start off with a flat parkour that looks more for the punchers. Then we've got a pure sprint stage on day two, a punchy sprint once again on day three. We've got a time trial in Mont Luçon on day four. After that, hilly slash medium mountain, hilly slash medium mountain, and finally the mountain stage to the Col du Tourigny, 15 kilometers at 7.4%. Oops, I forgot stage eight, medium mountains, but not so selective. So the race should be done by the time stage seven ends. We've got a strong squad here. We start off with Kasper Andersen for the sprints, Alex Borel for the punchy races. Voisar is here for the mountains and good support in Wang, Page, Trastour and Charest. But of course we are fighting top tier World Tour competition now. Phillips and Caleb Ewan Demar, it's gonna be difficult for Andersen to win a sprint here. Here we go, 5k to go, last hill is right here and we are surviving well. McNulty did a move but it didn't work out. I'll have Page take over from Gustav Wang. We've got two riders ahead of Baudin right now. I'm gonna try and go for Anderson on this one, I think, because it looks like it's gonna come down to a sprint right here. Three kilometers to go, I'll have Baudin launch fairly soon in this ascent before the corner. Right now, Anderson is ready to launch as well. Not yet, not yet. Let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. You went on the left side with his lead out. I'm gonna launch right now with Anderson. That's a bit too late. I think I launched too late. It's gonna be for Van der Poel. Philips and Mathieu Van der Poel. Ah, Philipsen takes it. Mathieu Van der Poel in second, his teammate. And we're gonna finish somewhere in the top 10. Sixth is not a bad result for us with Jasper Philipsen taking the lead here, but I think I could have gotten perhaps a podium if I played it better. Now a pure sprint stage for Anderson. This might be a bit harder. 99 now, last three kilometers. Incoming, Trastur will launch early. Oof. This is bad, I think. I think this is bad. I think this is bad. Oh, la, 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 la. 
I can't launch right now, can I? Can we follow Ewan right here? Can we do that? I will launch right now with Anderson. Fuck it. I'm doing it. We've got Penua on the right, Anderson in the middle, Demar on the left side. Yeah, we we lost our energy before we had to sprint, so that's not good. Jasper Philipson wins the stage. Honestly, I think it's quite simple. I think I launched too early with every single one of my last three riders, and that's how we ended up eighth with Anderson. We'll try that one more time on the left of a sprint stage. A bit of a hilly sprint, this one. 2.4 kilometers to go. Baudin can launch right now with 2k to go with his acceleration. Paj in the wheel can launch right now. Anderson at 1.2k to go. We're so far behind right now. We are so far behind. We're, we're pushing through. We're pushing through. Come on, Anderson. Oh, we're not gonna win. We're so close! Come on! Ah! Oh, Søren Kro Andersen takes it! Not Andersen! Not our Andersen! Jasper Philipsen second. We get third. At least we're getting closer. At least we're on the podium now with our third spot. So that's better than whatever positions we had the last two stages. After the sprint stages, we are 10th in GC with Vazar. But in all honesty, I don't know if we can actually go for GC with this man. Knowing the time trial's coming up and we're about to be destroyed there. While I probably won't focus on trying to get Vazar the best time, I'll put all my eggs in the basket of Gustav Wang in the hopes of getting a good result in this time trial. Here we go. Gustav Wang is off. I'm going to start off on 85. That's probably too much, but I'll adapt it towards the end of the time trial. The first time check coming up, Quinton Hedmans is currently in first. Let's see what Gustav Wang does. We get fourth, damn it, on seven seconds. Two kilometers to go. The road goes uphill now, so I'm going to up it towards 86, 87, something like that. Going to spend most of my energy in the last kilometer here, 95. Let's do that. Let's get rid of all the red energy right now, 99. And we get first on the finish, six seconds ahead of Watson. So spending the energy at the end was the good plan. Despite my happiness after he crossed the line, he's not even in the top 16, his 19th on 33 seconds of the winner, McNulty here. GCY Søren Kronderson takes the crown. We are still A with Anderson, but let's be honest, our sprinter is not our GC leader. Fazar has been decapitated, 50th on 1 minute 48, so GC is not in the cards here. On to the medium mountain slash hilly parkours then for the next two stages. I'm gonna try and survive with both Baudin and Fazar and see what I can do on a stage like this. With about 50k to go, the weather is grim and the race situation as well for our team. Two riders with energy in the peloton group right now of 110 people, so that's not that great. One major climb, one medium climb towards the finish line, so... Come on, Fazar, today's your day. 1.5 kilometers towards the top of the climb. I'm at the front, but I'm not actually pacing. It's just that easy of a tempo. 54 people in this group. Should I go for a move? I might go, actually. There we go. Let's see what happens. Let's go on a bit of an adventure. 75. Does anybody respond to that? Not really. We've got a gap, and nobody's closing it down for now. Halfway to descend, we've got a gap of 30 seconds still. Still the same person chasing me, so... For now, we're looking decent. I'm gonna have to drop it towards 65, though, because I want to recover in this ascent to actually be able to survive the next climb. So I think we'll get caught by the foot of the climb. Here we go. We're starting to climb right now. The gap is 16 seconds on Conrad chasing me, group of 50. So it's better to start with a small advantage than be behind, I guess. It's 5.6 kilometers, 5%. So an easier one. Molar directly closing it down. Carlos Rodriguez as well, directly in the wheel. Looks like we might have to fight now to follow the tempo because this is excruciating. This will make a selection. There goes the move. Martinez, Pitcock, Higita. Pitcock at Cofidis. Just looks so weird, doesn't it? Anyway, let's sit up. Let's make sure we don't pace that much. Let's do 65 for a bit and see what happens next. Another move on the left side. We've got Mas Higita going. Ooh la 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 la. We still have a proper mount to climb, I think. Intermediate sprint in the middle of the climb is a bit odd to see. And we see Philipson still here. How is Philipson still here? Caleb Ewan as well. They're all fighting for the intermediate sprint. I'm going to try and beat them just to annoy them. There we go. There goes Fazar. He takes the intermediate sprint away from them. <laughs> Actually, that might have been Kral Anderson. Nonetheless, we survived that. Looks like it's just going to be a sprint, to be honest. Philipson might actually survive them. going to attack. There goes Fazar. Come on, 99, my friend. All out. Carapaz, Hindley, all with us. I'm completely out of energy. Let's hope these two can bridge up. Otherwise, I've got no chance of making it. Five kilometers, and we are caught by Pitcock. So that's less likable. Let's see if we can stay in the wheel of Carapaz now. I should probably switch to Pitcock's wheel, though, because he's the better sprinter here. We've got to move Carapaz once again. Hindley following Bardet. I'm just going to stay in the wheel of Pitcock. Can I follow that wheel? I don't think I can, because I'm literally dying doing so. 
This is not good at all. Oh la la. We're spending loads of red bar here. Pitcock, keep closing it down for me, my friend. Keep closing it down. Last kilometer. Let us sprint right now with Fazar. Top 10 in the stage. Maybe. Probably not. The stage is going to be for Clement Rousseau. Jesus. He's got the stage ahead of Van der Poel and Vingegaard. That's not how I expected the stage to end. That's for sure. I will say it is fascinating to see BMC back into Peloton right now with a stage win in Paris-Nice with Rousseau. So fascinating to see them back. When it comes to GC, not in the top 16 with Voisar, we are now 19th. In an ideal world, we can get into the top 10, but it will not be easy. I will try nonetheless. We can quite literally just try that again because this stage, stage six is very similar, but a slight bit easier when it comes to the last climb. It honestly looks quite similar to the Fonar Dash race we did earlier. This might turn out to be a bad decision, but both Dan's leader for the stage. The big climb is about to start right here, but it's survivable for Bodan. The last hill is really doable for him as well, so he has a better chance of winning a stage than Vazar. There we go, at the top. We had some moves on the climb, but we countered every single one of them with our three-man train. The goal is now simple. Let us make sure we can somehow control this with the team we have left. <laughs> Wang will probably not get to them. Nah, he's dropped. He's fully dropped. So we don't need to look after him. I'm going to drop it towards 65 on Charin. We don't need to go harder on this ascent. We've got no breakaway to catch. 60 even. Recover fully, guys. And then we can try and do a lead out for Bonin at the end. 4.5 kilometers to go, but we need to watch out because despite Baudin surviving this nicely, the likes of Philipson is still here as well. I don't understand how, but it's the case. That's 99 with Charin right now. 3k to go. Let's launch a sprint with him. Vazar can do the lead out. That is something I'm certain of. He can launch right now. Is that early? It might be. Bodan the wheel. Bodan the wheel. Come on, Bodan. Come on, Bodan. Come on, Bodan. Come on, Bodan. Launch right now. Ah, uh, our energy is empty. Too early. Too early. The Mars is going to win this stage. The Mars is going to win a medium slash hilly mountain stage. Damn, we are 11th. Just outside of the top 10 right here. So that's kind of disappointing, to be honest. We could have gotten a much better result there. Sudden Anderson still in the lead. GC wise, Vazar is now still on 19th on 1 minute. 47. On to the big mountain stage then. On paper, Vazar should really fit on this one. Maybe we can move up to a top 15 on this stage, but it will not be easy. Col de Turini, a major climb at the end of the stage. Let's try and survive and hopefully we have a decent result. I've made a risky decision. Baudin's gonna be our leader today. He's got 75 mountain and 79 hill today, while Vazar is only 74 with a minus two day. So the worst possible day of the week to get a minus two, Vazar. Come on, guy. Anyway, Baudin's better for today. I don't really care about GC in this race, so let's get as close as possible with Baudin instead. Ooh, 10k to go. Positioning is bloody terrible, as you can see. That's how much we are behind at the moment in the group. But I kind of have to do that, because otherwise I spend too much energy on the initial part of the climb. Meanwhile, we have attacks up front. Hindley, Vingago, Bardet, Carapaz, Quintana. And I'm still working at the back, trying to make my way to the front. Oh, we are so far behind. This is so, so bad. Let's get our energy gel out. We've got 5k to climb right now. The front of the race is on 4k of the finish line. Looks like Jai Hindley is going to win the stage ahead of the likes of Carapaz and Vingago. We're not going to finish anywhere close to this. I think we're going to get like 25th or something. We're closing down a group of Stork, Bargilla and some random dude on Alpacin. But hey, it won't be close to the front rider. I wasn't very wrong with my guess. I think we're 27th. Okay, so close to the top 25 I was expecting. I don't know. I expected better, to be honest. But hey, we weren't going to get a good result on this one anyway. So it's not the end of the world. GC-wise, we obviously threw away the top 20. We no, we didn't actually. We're 20 for Dionis Vazar. I didn't expect to still have that spot, but I'll take it. Here comes the final stage then. GC is not possible. Stage wins very difficult. I think I'm going to go for the KOM jersey. I think Baudin is on 7 or 5 points while the lead is 23. And there's definitely enough points available on the route. So let's try that. Ooh, a plus 3 on Baudin. That would be perfect. Perfect in the breakaway. Bosch can already launch the breakaway right now. Let's see if I can move to the front with Baudin as soon as possible to try and jump over. Come on, guys. Let me through. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go into the breakaway right now. I'm going to drop back Bosch towards Baudin so that Baudin doesn't need to do the work. We've got some people chasing here, so that's not fun. But I think Baudin, the breakaway, should be allowed. I'm fairly certain of that. Bosch can start pacing, Baudin in the wheel, there we go, let's do 90 to make sure we actually make a gap on the peloton. Peter Seri is chasing us. Why is Peter Seri chasing us? 
Let's jump across with Ross Tour for a second here and let's try and make sure we've got an extra employee domestique in that group. <laughs> that actually did well. And we're caught. Okay, that was a very stupid plan. Let's just sit up and recover and make sure we can sprint for it at the end of today's stage. I've completely given up on KOM already. We've started the final climb of the day. The cold air 6.1 kilometers, 7.7%. .7%. Baudin's well settled right here. Fazar is here. We just got to get over the climb, catch the breakaway who is two minutes ahead, but... On this climb, that might just disappear. We've got attacks in the group. Guillaume Martin and now Godou is going. Vingega is going. We just got to pace with Vazar and hope that we can figure out how to catch everybody here while still having Vazar over the top so we can lead out Baudet at the end of the stage. So, pretty intricate plan, but it looks like it's kind of working. That is the top right there, but it doesn't go downhill instantly. So, we've got some time to catch these three on the plateau section on top here. There we go, we are catching them right before the descent. 10 seconds is a gap right now, so that's fine. Actually, we are in a very reduced group right now of 8 people, so I don't know how that happened, but I'm very much down for it because we might move up in GC with Vozar if I can keep this up. Should I be going for Vozar instead of Baudin as a consequence? Let me take a look at the ranking. In GC, we are on 20th on 555. Oh, no, I can basically move up like four spots, so it's not worth it. Let's go for the stage with Baudin instead. We've got a good position, two riders out of eight, and we've got a lead out for Baudin, so let's try this. 2.5 kilometers to go, a full peloton in our wheel suddenly, but hey, I'll take it. Baudin, come on, my man, come on, Baudin. Oh, la, 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 oh, la, 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 la. This is going to be a victory. This is going to be a victory. No, 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 I called too early. I called too early. I called it too early. Oh, ho, ho, ho. another podium. Penoe wins. Albanese is second. Baudin third. Oh, damn it. I really would have liked to win that stage, but no. Penoe had to ruin the day for us once again. GC-wise, we are still in 20th, I'm fairly certain. Actually, we moved up three spots. We're now on 17th. Doesn't matter much for me. It wasn't a terrible episode. Still two victories at La Weglia and Alps Maritime de Var, but I would have liked to have gotten something at Paranese, and maybe it's my own fault. I probably should have aimed for stage wins in the breakaway and KOM jersey, perhaps, and I went straight for stage wins from the peloton every time. So I think it's a tactical mistake. For Tour de Suisse and so forth, we should go for KOM and breakaway, maybe. Anyway, two victories, you know what that means, 20 euros for the charity pot, we're now at 500, a wonderful number, after a bit over two seasons into this playthrough. That's gonna be it for today's episode, though, we had our first stage race in World Tour, kind of disappointing, but that doesn't mean the rest of the World Tour races will be as well, so I can't wait to get started with those, I'm looking forward to the next episode already, and I hope you're as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon, goodbye!